Welcome to Billy Ho Sports. Uh, Derby week is uh, is uh, come and gone, but uh, still plenty of stakes racing out there. Happy everybody staying engaged with Billy Ho Sports. We're taking you all the way through the Triple Crown, all the way through the entire year Breeders' Cup, and we'll be right back on the Derby Trail again before you even realize it. It's like Christmas. You turn around and here it is. So, this week, we're actually heading out to uh, Aqueduct Racetrack. It's Belmont at the Big A, uh, where there's a trio of graded stakes races. And uh, I've already covered the three-year-olds. So uh, go ahead and check that video out. The Peter Pan stakes is the, the probably the feature race. It's not worth the most, but it's the three-year-olds, so we're familiar. Some derby trailers, things of that nature. Good video. Check it out. Today... We're going to hit the Man of War stakes, and then the Run Happy is the other one, is the Sprint. So the Man of War is up first. That's going to get the bulk of our coverage, and it's going to be a mile and three-eighths on the turf for four-year-olds and up. So anyway, uh, I did have a goal this year of getting to that 2,000 subscriber mark, and I thought I could do it by the end of the Triple Crown Run and the Belmont stakes, but you guys have been so awesome. Uh, almost closed it out by a derby. Just about 100 more to go. So if you have not subscribed to the channel, please do so. Smash that like button. Very much appreciated. All the comments uh, are, are more than welcome. Tell me who you like in, uh, in either one of these two races I'm going to cover. Can you beat? It's looking like maybe some pretty chalky favorites that have uh, been off for a little while. So is this a time to pounce and try to beat those favorites? Or are you going to be ready to uh, lay it down for them? So without further ado... Away we go. All right. Number one is going to be Ohana Honor. That's uh, sorry about Honor Co. Shug McGahee is the trainer. Kendrick Carmouche will ride. Recently won a big uh, N2X allowance for 120K at Keeneland in a change of styles uh, of sorts. I, I, I had him pegged as a closer, but he went wire to wire in this one. And, uh, and he is also making a big jump in class. So it will be a lot to ask out of that one. And when we get to the past performances, we'll go over some more horses. We got, uh, I believe, eight or so in this one. Uh, number two, Kurtz, uh, five to one. Morning line, Chris Clement is the trainer. Joel Rosario uh, rode him last time where he rallied uh, down the stretch to take the Pan American Stakes grade two event on the turf at Gulfstream going a mile and a half. Uh, this one is, I think, mile and three eighths. So, uh, fine turn of foot, and even Joel Rosario had to jerk him straight and redirect him on his path, and then he just sent like a missile and uh, was able to run down horses like Tony Port, uh, who's in this race as well. So, uh, good looking horse should have a good pace for him to run into. So, I like him. Uh, number three, speaking of pace, is so high. That's 20 to 1, and that's Nate Paul Chatter Paul is the trainer. Romero Marah is the jockey. Uh, so he is going to be definitely setting your pace. He's gotten loose a few times before, so uh be on the lookout. Uh and don't be surprised if you see him out 10 links ahead of the of everybody and then wait, and then they'll he'll come back down. So uh anyway, number four is Harry Hood. That's Mark Henning. And uh, ridden by Johnny V. Velasquez, uh, lost by a nose to Kurtz in, a, in that Pan Am that we uh, were looking at there. Huge effort after just mediocre. We'll look at his past performances, and I'll show you. Uh, just optional claiming and allowance all the way up to this, and then he runs this monster race uh, for 20 points higher than any Brisnet number that he ever had. So it's kind of hard to uh, see if he's going to do that again. Uh, repeat performances like that don't happen very often. So he, he does have a win on this surface last October, I do believe. So uh, number five, Tony Port is uh, six to one. And that's uh, Pioneer of the Nile is the sire. Chris Clement, uh, another entry for him. Getting Irad Ortiz aboard uh, was third by a neck in that Pan Am and showed a good rally after uh, laying kind of a stalking off the pace trip. But he was inside all the way. 
and then uh, the the lane opened up, so he didn't get bottled up, so no excuses. Uh, but it, uh, that one was still showed a good rally down the stretch, and it was at somewhat of a slower pace. Uh, but the previous race, the Grade Two Mac uh, Dar Darmidia, I do believe, is uh, a near miss there uh, by a neck. So if if the name sounds familiar, you can remember back to the 2022 Kentucky Derby. Uh, he finished seventh place, and then I think almost won the uh, Ohio Derby. I think uh, ran second to uh, two fills. I think maybe uh, I might be wrong about that. But trainer jockey combo looks good. Uh, veteran of graded many, many graded stakes events. So solid horse, uh, not to be dismissed for sure. Number six, Greek Order, is that six to one. Bill Mott trainer, Jose Lescano is the rider. Rough debut on U.S. turf. Uh, hopped at the start, then steadied at seven eighths. Uh, moved, moved up to sixth. But the added distance does seem to be right. He won at a mile and a quarter uh, last uh, August overseas. So uh, not one I'm real high on, but one that's in the mix. Rocket and Roll is the number seven. That's a straight pass for me. Uh, number eight is Silver Knot. Three to one, Morning Line, Charlie Appleby, Flavian Pratt. Uh, one of the uh, last summer's Terror Forces that I kind of caught on to in this three-year-old season, uh, now a four-year-old who came out and won the grade two Elkhorn uh, last April, did it very impressively, but uh, did have a, a bit of a slow pace, I believe 50 for the half mile. So uh, he had plenty of steam in uh, going down the stretch, but he's been a competitive grade one, grade two horse since coming to the United States last spring. He's faced some of the best uh, turf routers in the world, so definitely cannot be dismissed. And rounding it out is number nine, Nation's Pride. Uh, that is trained by Chile Appleby. Frankie DeTore, uh looking for a flying dismount in this one. Uh, this is a return to the United States. Uh, just a five-month layoff, so not too bad. But the best time to, would, to catch this horse would be off a layoff. But I believe he's got the class, the tactical speed. Uh, the, only, the only thing is, is he, is he race ready? And with Charlie Appleby training him, I don't see why he would not. So let's jump on to the past performances and take a quick look. And then we will finish it up with the run happy. Okay, looking at the Brisnet past performances, uh, mile and three eighths, like I mentioned, on the turf, grade two, four hundred thousand dollar purse, four year olds and up. Uh, but looking up here, you can see Nation's Pride is the favorite, one eighty two point nine for the prime power rating. So that is a significant gap. Uh, you don't uh, usually uh, that's a heavy that shows a heavy favorite or a big class rating. Uh, he's not that actually as far as class rating over Greek order, but it is what it is. So not really seeing it uh, from the number one. Like I said, I think he lacks the early speed to keep up here. Number two, Kurtz is definitely going to be in the mix for me. The debut uh, in the States was impressive getting up by a nose and he showed that that speed down the stretch after he was jerked straight and he just he looked like he took off like a rocket ship down the stretch so i think he's going to be digging american turf uh so look out for this one uh maybe we catch uh catch him on the improved and just uh maybe uh not quite race ready nation's pride could be a big upset candidate is second in the prime power uh chris clement is uh Definitely the, the the top notch of, of trainers on the turf. So good looking uh, matchup here with Joel Rosario riding him once again. Big chance to win here. So, uh, and here's so high. This is what I mentioned about the pace setter. You can see he took off uh, and won wire to wire here, which was impressive. But the plus 11, plus 14 dictates a faster pace, 2247. Of course, it was just a mile and a sixteenth, but still, a mile and three eighths. Uh, you know, he he's taking it uh, to the next level on on a lot of these. And if you look way down here, this uh, right here in this October race at this track, yielding mile and a half turf in the uh, classic turf classic grade one, he could not hold on, but he got out by nineteen 
uh, early. So if he, he might try to do that again, and then he was 12, then it was four, then they ran him down in the stretch. So it is what it is. Uh, so high, it looks like a pace setter. Uh, so we're definitely getting an honest pace. This is what I was talking about with Harry Hood. Look, 80s, 84s, 85s, allowance. Uh, he did win the allowance and won a maiden claimer. So he's got some success. But, I mean, optional claiming, 35K in 1X. You know, these are good for, for just horses in general. It's they're, they're pretty. But, I mean, that's not great at stakes company. And he's only running 80s and 90s. I mean, he did run a 97 here. But uh, but this just 101 out of nowhere just seems a little off to me. So I'm going to have to see that again uh, as far as like a magician that did, did a card trick and I didn't understand it. So uh, show me again. Harry Hood. Tiny Port. Uh, ran a 101. This is much more believable to me. Got a 91. Uh, just missed by a neck. Going a mile and three eighths. Same distance we're going Saturday. I mean, nothing but good results. He's actually was pretty good on the uh, the dirt leading up to it, uh, but he uh, didn't quite get there. You know, like we've talked about uh, the seventh place derby, he kind of fell off toward the toward the end of his three year old season, as you can see. And then they got him out on the turf uh, in 2023 in the in the mid uh, summer. Okay, I was losing my place. I, my apologies. But Greek order, like I said, I was passing on rocket roll. I'm passing on, and there's your two silver knot. Uh, do you believe he's going to roll? So you can see the minus twenty three, minus twelve, the fifty pace. That's how he was able to flush it uh, down the stretch so well. Uh, most of the time, he's still competitive. He still runs hard, uh, but he just doesn't win. So I don't know if maybe this is turning over a new leaf at four. Uh, with a with a win right out of the gate, which is nice. But I, I would also err on the side of older horses. He he just turned four, so you got five and six year old horses. I believe number two uh, is a six year old, and this one is a five year old. So those are your uh, choices, Nation's Pride. Let's see, uh, finalize some selections here, and uh, take a look at what we got. Four horses, obviously. I'm going to put Nation's Pride on top. Uh, number eight, Silver Knot, excuse me, almost knocked my mic over. <laughs> but Nation's Pride is, uh, seems to be the one to beat, only off a five-month layoff, uh, probably gets it done. Silver Knot, uh, if it's a fast pace, if number three gets out there, Silver Knot's going to have a hard time, even though he's probably as far as like a horse that I would like more than these other ones. Silver Knot is probably the horse I like the best. But I am starting to warm up to this uh, Cortez. I think that closing style, if he does get a hot pace, big chance for the upset. So that's a kind of a sleeper slash horse. Uh, the Pan Am race was competitive, going uh, an, an honest pace, going a mile and a half. So uh, Nason's pride should get it done. But if he slips up, Cortez can be there. Silver Knot might get out front and uh, get past the, the three horse. And if so high falters early, then Silver Knot can settle in a little bit, maybe. Uh, so all those horses, I think your winner is one of these four. Absolutely. Uh, Tawny Port has definitely shown the ability to run on the turf, getting Irad Ortiz aboard. So I would use all four of these on top of any exotics plays. I wouldn't leave any one of them out because I don't trust any of them to, uh, to full-on win. But if you did want a single, I guess you would logically single the nine. So that will do it for the Man of War Stakes. But real quick, uh, bonus uh, coverage of the Run Happy Stakes. Uh, and the Run Happy Stakes is going to be six uh, furlongs dirt sprint, six horse field, pretty competitive. Uh, so we're just going to do the uh, past performances on this one. So I'm going to share the screen and we're going to take a look. Okay, so your even money chalk is going to be straight no chaser coming in off of nearly a year on the shelf and uh, new trainer Juan Landeros. So it's a pretty soft landing spot, I'd say, for him uh, against this this group. So uh, but definitely has the best speed figures uh, and a, a wire to wire job should be going right to the lead. 
and should be taking number two uh, Durant along with them. Uh, who's who's had some uh, struggles lately, but did finally get a break. I think Durant tapered off here. See, you can see he's run some really triple-digit brisnets, some 90s, but I think he got a little bit too many starts under his belt, like eight starts in six months. You can see him doubling up here in August, doubling up again in October. So uh, probably got uh, to where he needed a break desperately, so he, he got January through May off and uh, ran okay, but they put him out on the turf. So I didn't know if that was maybe strategical So because uh, he's never shown any tendencies to run on turf. Maybe they just wanted to get him a softer surface to run on and and maybe get uh, help his uh, fitness a little bit. So he could be one that might be interesting low-key wise. Stage left, I, I feel like uh, – is not going to be there. Maybe it's uh, just the poor graded stakes record for the trainer and and whatnot. But uh, Vasquez Jacobson, not really great success, and not showing a lot of speed for you know. And I don't think he's got the speed to close this group. Let's put it that way. Ninety percent. Maddie is a closer. I think uh, this one can uh, get it done. The gelding, four years old. <clears throat> So I think it could be one that will pick up the pieces late and maybe round out the exacta. 24 Mamba does win for the coolest name, uh, but uh, I don't think I'm going to have any interest in him either. And then you got Joey Freshwater, who ran a monster uh, 103 right here uh, in his last outing, going six furlongs at Aqueduct. So that's definitely going to put him on the public radar betting-wise. So those are your six horses in the run happy. Let's finalize some picks and get on out of here. So Anyway, a close runner-up for the best name in this race has got to be number six, Joey Freshwater, because I, I, I'm sitting, sitting here thinking I'm watching a, a mafia movie and somebody walks in and goes, anybody seen Joey Freshwater? Hey, forget about it. But anyway, uh, that massive 103 speed figure uh, in the win at Aqueduct, Linda Rice is not the best. There, there's two knocks, I think. Linda Rice had not off to the best 2024 season, and Jose Lescano, 0 for 10 in the meet, so uh, I don't know. Maybe I would key the one on top of the two, four, six, and then overall for a trifecta. Or you could just hit the all button twice if you want to key the one and just hope for the best. Sometimes when you do that kind of thing, you're spending more than you need to. Uh, with a six horse field, you just you, you think you got it covered. That's why I would save the all button for last because I think the two, the four, the six, either one of these, either and you might flip flop them. You might go one. Two four six all, two four six one all like that. That way you're you're uh, covered uh, all always around, and you're not hitting the all button twice. So keep an eye on the tote board for that one because if that number one horse does go off at even or greater, then that might be worth the bet that just to double your money or maybe even get a six to five. Uh, so if it, especially if it maybe lands on a money back special type of bet. I would just put the $10 on that. And then, you know, that way you're probably got a good shot of not losing any money. Although now that I think about it, only six horses in the race, you might not even get second place. I think, I think if all six stay in the race, they'll, they'll pay top two. So first or second. So that's, that still might be good enough, but anyway, that'll do it for the show. Uh, thanks for staying engaged. Look out for more content. The Preakness, uh, a, a Preakness preview will be coming soon once we get all the entries in, especially by Monday because they're doing the post-draw Monday. We'll have past performances. We'll do race replays. We'll do it all over again for the Preakness, but we'll have half the horses that we had before. So easier on us, right? Best of luck this week. See you soon.